Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as, uh, as Sarah kindly said, uh, my name is Ishai. I am a SharePoint expert, SharePoint developer, and uh, trainer. And um, with, without further ado, let, let's begin. I know you want me to, to start and show you what uh, this is about. So we're going to start by talking about the Quizcom Print app. Um, this is a, an app that uh, and that allows you to easily select the documents, the list items, the uh, wiki pages, attachments, merge them all into a PDF file and print or just save the PDF file all done in a single click. This is a very useful app and uh, I will try and show you why this is all, uh, this will make your user's life uh, easier but also will make it uh, easier for you uh, depending on the, uh, the type of work that you usually do will make it easier for you to develop um, uh, solutions uh, for your workplace that uh, that will give you richer interfaces and richer ways to work with your data. Um, the app allows you to merge the documents uh, list on wiki pages. Uh, it's customizable, uh, allowing you to specify dynamic uh, uh, page header and footer, which is uh, very cool. I'll, uh, I'll try to show you that. And it supports field level permissions, which is uh, another Quizcom app that uh, you can purchase and uh, install. And if you install it, uh, it uh, the apps are actually, uh, they support each other. So if you specify that a certain user cannot see a certain field or that under certain conditions, for example, if the status is closed, don't show uh, a field or two, all of that is respected by the app and the print app will not uh, uh, will not print the fields that you have configured not to be shown. Uh, uh, supports uh, wiki pages, we, uh, we discussed that. Watermark, so we're able to add a watermark to, uh, to our printing. And basically the uh, site, um, I think it's the next line, no. No, I I missed it. I thought I thought I added that line. Basically, all the settings of uh, the the app, all the customizable settings from the uh, watermark, the header and footer, and uh, things like that, uh, can be uh, uh, the settings are very granular. You can set them at the site collection level, and then you can uh, you can break the settings uh, as you go down into a specific site or into a specific library. That allows you as a site collection administrator to manage or to, uh, to enforce a certain standard uh, for all printing from, uh, uh, from your SharePoint site, or you can allow it to, to be on a library by library or list by list uh, uh, setting. So that's very extremely useful. Um, and you get the print app for free if you get the, uh, the Quizcom Forms Enterprise Bundle, uh, or you can uh, purchase the app uh, by itself. Um, we're going to jump uh, straight to the demo. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, the, uh, we're going to start by looking at some print settings, uh, and we're going to see a demo of printing individual documents, printing multiple documents, printing list items, uh, and the integration with Quizcom Forms, and printing wiki pages. Okay, hope that everyone can uh, see my page. Actually, Sarah, can you comment? Can you see my, my page? Just to make sure. Yes, good, and everyone can hear me, I'm guessing. Um, okay, so what we have here is an Office 365 uh, website that I created for the purpose of this uh, demo. Uh, you can see it's pretty much a, a out of box uh, website and it has the documents uh, uh, component here with two documents, two of uh, uh, the real life CVs of um, uh, people in my company. And if I go into the document library, We can see uh, that I can select a document and as soon as I select the document, I have the print documents uh, uh, button made available for me. For me. Also, uh, before, before I select it, and I have the print settings uh, button. That's, uh, that allows me to, uh, to get into the settings, which is the first thing I wanted to show you. The settings by default, if I go through, uh, to them from a document library, then uh, are set to inherit from the site settings uh, with a link to edit the site settings. If I don't want to inherit, I can just disconnect it and say this library will have different settings, at which point I can set up the page layout. And I say, I'm going to say this is an A4. Um, this is a library that will print in A4, will print in portrait, 
and we'll have these margins. And we can select whether or not we allow the end users to customize the page layout settings. Let's keep, uh, let's keep that on. Uh, the next bit that I can set up is the header and footer. And I can say that whenever someone prints from, uh, from this library, I want a header and footer. Uh, and you can see there's already some tokens in there, uh, like printed by me, so it will put my name in it, uh, printed on now, uh, page number of to uh, total pages. And uh, this is just a, a rich HTML box, so I can add uh, images, I can add links to, uh, to it, uh, not, not that I know why I would add a uh, link to something I'm printing because it will just show as, as text, but uh, you, you can add tables, you can uh, do whatever you want in the header and footer, and you can allow or not allow the user to select whether they want the header and footer. So if you want it to be optional, you can say uh, uh, that we allow the users. If we don't want it to be optional, we, we say the users cannot choose. Finally, watermarks. I'm gonna put a watermark, uh, so I can say uh, property of, that's my company's name here in Canberra. Uh, I can uh, design the, the layout, uh, um, how I want the watermark to, to show, and whether I want users to, uh, uh, to override my watermark. Okay. I think I'm done with the settings. I'll go back to the document library. And the next thing I wanted to, uh, to show you was printing individual documents. Uh, out of that, I'll show you how we can preview, how we can download to PDF, how we can print with and without properties and print properties only. So if I uh, select an individual document, in, in this case, my CV, and I say print documents, So pretty much what you expect, you, you get, uh, the user gets a, a page with the settings that they're allowed or not allowed uh, uh, to set. So you can see I can choose to include or not include the header and footer and, and, uh, uh, and the watermark. Um, I can choose if I want to, uh, to print the document, the document and the document's properties, or just the properties. If I click preview, I get a, 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 preview, button, a preview window that shows me what will be printed. You'll all have to excuse the internet down here in Australia. Okay, so you can see the preview, you get the, uh, the CV document, the, uh, the PDF, uh, you get the, uh, the header and the, the footer. The problem is this document already has a header, so the header uh, overlaps here. This, of course, will uh, the setting of the header will be better uh, for documents that do not have a header. And you can see the watermark uh, on, the, uh, on the document on every page. You can see that the, uh, the tokens that uh, were, uh, were set up in the footer and the header have been uh, um, replaced with the actual value. So where the token said list, it says documents. That's the name of the list that it came from. Uh, it came from uh, uh, the date, which I know for you is in the future. Um, the uh, printed by, so you can see it replaced my name, uh, well, it replaced the square brackets me with my name. Uh, printed on is the current date and time. And the number of pages and what page uh, we're on, and it's all uh, it's all here. Um, I can choose to download this to a PDF, and if I do that, the, my browser just downloads a PDF, and if I open that PDF, here's the file. So now I can I, I have the file. I can do with it uh, what I want, or if I want, I'll do that again. I can just say print. It's building the PDF now. There we go. And as you can see, the, the system uh, out of box printing dialog comes up, allowing me to print and choose which printer I want to print to, whether I want color or not. So this is regular printing that will send it to my printer. Now, to save the planet, I'm not going to waste uh, paper or ink, and I'm going to uh, cancel out of that. 
So that was the, uh, the very, very simple and very, very quick uh, showing how I can print individual uh, documents. Ah, the one thing I wanted to show you is a print with and without properties and print properties uh, only what that looks like. So let me uh, skip uh, back. So if I go back to print documents, uh, I didn't add any properties to uh, um, any custom properties here. So you, you'll have to trust me that if I do um, properties only, basically all the methods that are about the document is what's going to be printed. If I zoom in here a bit, you can see it's basically the, uh, the same view that we see if we go into document properties uh, uh, in, in the interface. It has the name of the document, it has the title of the document, uh, the version who created la uh, last modified. If I added any more columns to, uh, to my library, they'd be displayed here. So it's uh, also respecting whatever content type uh, you selected for your document. I would like to point out that the name of the document is also a link. So your PDF, if you save it as a PDF, will actually contain a link to the actual document. Um, if, I, if I do document and properties and refresh the preview, what we'll get is first we'll get the document, we'll get a, a the three pages that is the document with the watermark and, and so on. Uh, sorry, the second we'll get the, the document and above it, just before it, we'll get the, uh, the page with the properties. If I select more than one document and, and do a print, the two documents are essentially merged into one. So if I say documents only, preview, you'll see that instead of uh, the three pages that I had before, the documents will be merged into one. And that allows you to select documents of different types. It doesn't have to be two PDFs. It can be a PDF in Word. It can be multi uh, more, than, uh, more than two documents, however many documents you want. So you can see here now I have five documents instead of three. If I scroll down to the bottom, you can see that it changed to a different employee. And I believe, yeah, now we are moving on to printing list items. Now, this is where I wanted to show you the uh, very cool feature that I reckon will uh, is crucial if you're building um, lists that allow your users to do um, more advanced stuff. Uh, I just set up uh, very quickly using uh, Quizcom Forms, another Quizcom product. I set up a, a cool way for users to uh, to create invoices in my, my system. Uh, I just figured invoices is something that we're all familiar with, how to create an invoice, what, what involves in an invoice, and I won't have to explain uh, all the different fields. So you can see when I create a new invoice, the Quizcom Forms interface kicks in and, re and reformats the page to all the settings that I gave it, including putting my company name, my company details, my company logo, and then allowing me to choose uh, from a client invoice date. So instead of the fields being like in the SharePoint interface, uh, being uh, one uh, on top of one another, uh, I put them three in, in a row. So it's uh, easy for the user to create, a, uh, to choose clients and the invoice date. And then I'm going to say a taxi to air, uh, airport. I, I guess that's not really an invoice, so uh, I'll make it uh, SharePoint development yesterday um, and I worked eight hours and let, let's say I, I charge uh, 800 a day and then I can add items. How cool is this? This is a, a Quizcom repeating rows um, component which once you, you have it or it's part of the forms bundle the, I think the enterprise or the professional form, uh, forms bundle you're able to add rows to a, a, to a list item. Um, so I can add last month. I can add multiple rows in my invoice. And you can see here the total uh, automatically updates and then I can save. So 
That was a very nice experience for me filling up the form. But what I uh, really want to show you is what happens if I then go and say print the form. So this is printing a list item. Um, uh, and I have the choice of uh, item only include attachments, attachments only. I'll show you attachments in a second. Uh, and if I do a preview, you'll be able to see that, uh, that the print application respects the customizations that I've done in the other uh, Quizcom product, the Quizcom form. So it, uh, it keeps the logo, it keeps the name of the company, it keeps the, uh, the details, uh, uh, the banking details, it shows me the total, all the things uh, that I needed uh, in, in my invoice. Uh, it shows me the ID of the invoice here, which is the uh, list item ID. And that way I can download this as a PDF and email that to my client uh, as, uh, as I need it. Uh, you can even, uh, there's uh, some advanced uh, Quizcom products, uh, so, uh, part of the enterprise form package called uh, Custom Actions that, uh, uh, that can integrate with this even further, allowing you to put a button inside the form saying uh, print and mail and uh, things like that. Uh, I just don't, didn't have time to uh, set it up. Uh, for, uh, for this demo. Uh, I can select multi uh, multiple uh, invoices, but what I really wanted to show you is how it looks with attachments. So if I'm going to attach a file, and I'm going to attach the same file that I earlier printed. So you can see here, I've got my attachment, I'm gonna save it. And I updated my uh, my invoice. Um, so and, and another example that uh, I could uh, think about this, something that uh, you may want is expense reports. So if you want uh, your employees to do expense reports and attach the receipts, this could be a way to do that. And actually, uh, uh, the next product I'm going to show you is going to be very relevant to expense reports and attaching receipts because it will allow you to scan the, uh, the receipts directly from uh, uh, SharePoint. But what I wanted to show you is that if I'm going to click include attachments and then do a preview, basically everything is merged. I get the invoice and the attachments in one PDF or one print action. Here's the invoice and here's the CV underneath it. Okay, um, now we're going to discuss the Quizcom scan app. We're going to, uh, to talk about how uh, this app can easily scan papers into a single or multiple uh, documents. Uh, it can configure property values and upload the scan docs all in a single click. This is a great uh, add-in uh, to, uh, to your SharePoint environment, uh, especially if our users uh, do a lot of scanning. Uh, we enable batch paper scanning to produce multiple documents and it, you can create searchable PDF documents using uh, OCR, multilingual OCR feature that's included in professional edition of the product. And then that means that uh, if, you take a, if you take a scan or a picture of uh, something that has text, it actually detects the text in it and turns it into a searchable PDF so that uh, SharePoint can uh, search for it. Uh, not just SharePoint, also a person who opens the, uh, the PDF, I believe, can, uh, um, uh, can do a search within the file. The granular settings, so uh, once again, same as the print, you can define the settings on a site collection level, but you can uh, change the setting on a per, uh, per library level. You can preview the scan from SharePoint and you can uh, zip large uh, scanned files before saving to SharePoint. So you, ha you actually have the option if you have a lot of large files, you can say instead of uploading them as a single file to the document library, we're going to zip them into a, uh, into a smaller, uh, smaller file into one, one small file. 
Now we're we'll going to the demo. Before we do the demo, I think I'll just have to explain my uh, setup here. I do have a scanner in my office. I, however, it's a uh, it's about uh, 10 or 11 years old, so it doesn't have drivers for Windows. So what you're going to see when I uh, try to scan from it is it will open a very clunky interface which is the only way I found that uh, uh, to make that scanner still work uh, which is someone who uh, created an application that uh, allows old HP scanners to still work so let's uh, uh, let me show you how all of that works I'm going to go back to my document library and I'm going to show you first of all I'm going to show you the uh, scan settings So you see here next to print settings, sorry, almost missed it, the scan settings. And the scan settings, again, in the, by default, inherit from the site, uh, or I can tell it, no, I want a different one for the library. The auto-generate file name, so when you scan and it uploads to SharePoint, this is the, uh, the format that will be used. So I can add whatever I want here, uh, scan underscore username underscore date and time. Uh, so that uh, that may, uh, make sure the user doesn't get prompted for a uh, for file name and we just generate something that tells us who, who uploaded it or what it is and so on. We can cho choose the default output format. The user will have an option to change the output uh, format, but by default, we say it's going to be a PDF. Um, whether or not we want to override uh, existing documents, that's a very important one. Uh, although with auto-generated file names uh, that include the time, uh, it's very unlikely that there will be uh, existing documents because you usually users only manage to do uh, one document per, uh, uh, if they manage to do more than one per second, then uh, their internet and scanner are better than mine. Um, but uh, if you were to remove the, uh, the time here and only the date, and the user does two scans per, uh, on the same day, it will, uh, it will overwrite the, the previous one. So make sure your auto-generated file name is as unique as, uh, as you can make it by including the time. The restrictions, I can tell it to compress large files before upload. I'm going to leave that off for, uh, for now. Uh, allow users to perform multi-document scans. So this, uh, if we don't allow it, users won't be able to, um, to do a feeder scan. Um, and allow user, uh, user select scan, uh, uh, scan mode. That's whether uh, I allow them to change the scan, uh, the scan mode, which we'll see in a second when, uh, when I perform it. Let me save it, go back to the documents, and let's do a scan. Okay, if I go to scan documents, I get, I get the following options. I get edit settings and scan, scan using default settings, and quick scan. Quick scan will just uh, uh, latch on to all the defaults that are in in our system that are configured in uh, in in our system and will automatically scan using the, uh, those defaults without showing any dialog to to the user uh, the scan using uh, def default settings will load up the uh, the uh, load up the default settings not show the user any option to change them and but will show the user the, uh, the scan dialog allow them to to choose oh i want to uh, i want to choose uh, from um from the feeder or i want to uh, to scan from the flatbed or th things like that so uh, basically some settings will uh, will uh, still be shown but uh, essentially the user will just have the option preview don't preview uh, and uh, uh, have uh, the button to scan, while quick scan will immediately scan and save the document. So that's a way to make it extremely fast uh, for users who know exactly what they're doing, don't need a preview, and they're happy with just going with the scan. So the difference between th those two uh, can be life and day for people who do a lot of scans. Uh, some people will just want to do quick scan after quick scan after quick scan. Okay, so now when I go to uh, to scan, I have the choices of uh, all the scanners that I have in, in my uh, system. Um, and then I am going to leave all the settings blank and I'm going to tell it to scan, which sadly opens a third program. 
and that's only a problem in my system. You don't need to worry about it. It's uh, that's that's going to be um, and that's I'm sure that's going to be okay with normal scanners. So yeah, it opened a, uh, this application for me, in which I need, I need to tell it to scan. I don't know if you can hear in the background, my scanner flatbed came into action. I put in it a coupon for uh, some car service that, uh, that I got. So this is uh, my, my coupon. Okay, you can see that uh, uh, that it got scanned into uh, into this Unitwine thing. I'm going to tell it uh, uh, to import it. At which point, we get the Quizcom scan client. So again, this will be a lot smoother for someone who has a modern uh, a modern scanner with uh, uh, drivers for Windows 10. Uh, so the Quizcom scan client uh, detected what you just scanned. Now you're able to do multiple scans. So if you want to change uh, papers, you can do multiple uh, scans if you don't have a feeder, for example, uh, and keep adding them. So using the scan, uh, scan button, which would uh, uh, pop up the, uh, that dialog that we saw again, if I uh, click on it. We have the OCR button that, uh, uh, that allows us to, uh, to tell it do we want to make the PDF searchable using OCR? Which language do, uh, do, we, do we want? Uh, get more languages um, and OCR mode automatically run after scanning and, and so on. Um, we, can, we can actually print it, we can rotate it, we can edit the, uh, the scan. But when we're ready, we just click save and the document will be uploaded and my coupon is now in my document library. I get uh, the option to uh, to set uh, the title as part of the metadata. I'm going to leave it blank. And voila, there it is. If I open it, you can see that I can get hundred dollars in, in car services and that's how easy it is to uh, to scan using quizcom uh, quizcom scan yeah i'm gonna skip the phone after i uh, after that debacle with that uh, application but you know what i'm, I'm gonna uh, is it is it worth trying it, probably not that app is a bit uh, dodgy so I'll uh, I'll leave it for uh, for today. Um, that basically was what uh, uh, what I wanted to show you.